A detective showed up at my house and asked me where I was between 5 and 6. I told him kindergarten. Today, I'm going to recap a 2014 action thriller film called The Equalizer. Robert McCall wakes up at dawn to make his way to home art. His obsessive-compulsive disorder compels him to time each of his actions, including his morning routine and dishwashing chores. Despite being oblivious of his history, his peers hold him in high regard. On this specific day, he shares his lunch break with Ralphie, a friend and colleague currently on a weight loss journey. As Ralphie bites into his sandwich, the crunch alerts McCall to the presence of chips, confirmed after questioning Ralphie about his meal. Falling asleep isn't easy for McCall, which leads him to frequent a close by 24 hour diner for nighttime reading sessions over tea. His current read is The Old Man and the Sea. A young girl quizzes him about the story's protagonist catching the fish, to which he responds, not yet. After finishing her pie, the girl hails a taxi. Curious younger colleagues question McCall about his former job, and he amusingly tells them he once danced as a pip during a Gladys night show. When he returns to the diner later that night, the same girl is there, noting his fresh book. Robert recounts the ending of the last book to her. As they talk, a limousine pulls up opposite the diner. Slavi, her pimp, calls her and notifies her that her client is in the limousine. She expresses her revulsion to this client and reluctance to serve him, but Slavi ignores her objections and orders her to get to work. The limo door opens to reveal a portly man waiting for her, and she hesitantly leaves with him. The following night, McCall finds the girl in the diner again, this time with a bruise on her face. He hands her a donut he brought from work. Feeling anxious, she opts to break their usual routine and joins him at his table. She introduces herself as Terry, although her real name is Alina. She shares a CD of her own singing for McCall's future critique. She surmises that Robert recently lost his wife and is still mourning, to which he confirms, adding that his wife's unfulfilled reading challenge fostered his love for books. After leaving the restaurant, they walk and converse a while, before a car interrupts their plan to part ways. Slavi and his driver, Tevi, emerge from the car. Slavi hits Alina, and despite her request for him not to intervene, Robert notices Tevi is armed. Slavi hands McCall his business card, advising him to choose a different girl. McCall doesn't see Alina for several days and nights, growing increasingly worried. He eventually learns from the diner manager that Alina was brutally attacked and is now in intensive care. Upon visiting, he finds her face terribly battered and disfigured, and a sobbing girl named Mandy keeping her company. Robert maintains a discreet presence, watching from outside the room, unnoticed by the girls. In a subsequent scene, a tearful Mandy crosses paths with McCall. She goes to make coffee, filling the cup to its maximum capacity. McCall consoles her and expresses interest in Alina's condition, identifying himself as a friend. Mandy discloses that after Alina retaliated against Slavi's hit, his wrath grew, leading to her public humiliation. Slavi is known for his ruthless tactics, like throwing battery acid at one woman's face to serve as a grim reminder of his authority. His treatment of the women under his control is purely transactional. McCall ruminates over the situation for several days before deciding to intervene. Utilizing the business card given by Slavi, McCall gains entry into the restaurant where Slavi and his crew congregate. He presents an envelope containing $9,800 as a bargaining chip for Alina's freedom. Slavi and his crew ridicule McCall's proposition. Slavi states that Alina's youth is lucrative, and the proposed amount would barely cover a month of her service. After dismissing McCall's offer, he suggests that he might consider her release when her earning potential declines. As McCall retrieves the money and prepares to exit, he experiences a change of heart and locks the restaurant door. He meticulously assesses the men and their weaponry, triggers his watch's timer, and swiftly leaps into action. One thug raises a gun towards McCall, but a deft maneuver causes the man to shoot Slavi instead. McCall plunges a shot glass into the man's eye, stabs another with a knife, and repeatedly drives a corkscrew into Tevi until his demise. McCall then approaches the dying Slavi, offering him an unfiltered account of his imminent end. 
Following the bloodshed, a Russian mob enforcer named Teddy lands in Boston to investigate Slavi and his gang's demise. He partners with a clique of crooked police officers in his quest for leads. Initial impressions suggest a rival gang might be responsible. McCall notices Rafi's absence at work and learns from a manager that Rafi has resigned. He visits Rafi at his mother's diner, where Rafi now works due to an accidental fire. One of the corrupt cops, Frank Masters, escorts Teddy to John Looney, a local mob boss, to continue the investigation. Looney mocks Teddy and all Russians, provoking Teddy into attacking him with an ashtray while Frank neutralizes Looney's guards. Teddy persistently assaults Looney until he loses consciousness. Raymar and Peterson, two additional corrupt cops, eat at Rafi's mother's diner. They issue veiled threats of further accidents if she fails to meet her protection money deadline the following week. McCall intercepts the duo, asking them to register a crime report. Initially ignoring McCall and suggesting he call 911, they eventually capitulate when McCall shows them a video he recorded of their previous extortion activities. McCall gives them an ultimatum, return the extorted money, or he exposes the video to news agencies. Despite their initial resistance, McCall manages to overpower the pair. They acquiesce and subsequently return the money to Ralphie's mother. Soon after, Ralphie appears in a security guard uniform, having successfully passed his exam, and McCall is seen engaging in a friendly baseball game with his colleagues. When Robert returns to his workplace, he notices a peculiar interaction between Jenny, a cashier, and a customer. Jenny is being coerced into a silent robbery at gunpoint. McCall subtly intervenes, passing the cash to the man without causing panic. However, the thief demands Jenny's mother's ring which she reluctantly hands over while fighting back tears. McCall takes mental notes of the thief's tattoos, attire, and other distinguishing features. He considers intervening directly, but rethinks when he sees children entering the store who could potentially be in harm's way. Instead, he decides to follow the thief outside to record the license plate of his vehicle. Police later inform them that this robbery was part of a series committed by the same individual. McCall subsequently retrieves a sledgehammer from a rack. The next day, Jenny finds her wedding band returned in the cash register, while McCall is seen cleaning the sledgehammer before placing it back on the rack. Meanwhile, Teddy realizes that Alina is missing from Slavi's group and questions Mandy, who claims she didn't know Alina well. Upon further probing, Mandy confesses that she saw Alina in the hospital and a mysterious, friendly black man had also visited to ask about Alina, but she never identified him. Teddy, infuriated by her deceit, ends up strangling Mandy to death. Having gathered this new information, Teddy unearths video footage showing McCall entering the restaurant but not exiting. He confronts McCall at his apartment, posing as a detective. McCall instantly identifies him and answers his questions with rehearsed responses. Teddy deduces that McCall is more than he appears. Despite gaining more information about McCall, Teddy's research reveals a clean slate with no links to Sloppy's demise. This discrepancy leads Teddy to suspect that their knowledge about McCall is somehow distorted or incomplete. As Teddy and Frank, along with another accomplice, stake out in a car, Another man enters the diner where McCall is seated. As McCall identifies the man, he questions if there's anyone else they're waiting for. The man advances towards him, brandishing a firearm. However, a truck parks in front of the diner, blocking Teddy's view. McCall quickly neutralizes the threat by striking the man's abdomen with his book, bashing his head on the table, and snapping his neck. He then short-circuits the lights by plunging a knife into an electrical outlet. McCall exits the diner and proceeds to photograph Teddy and his associates in their vehicle using his mobile phone. The criminals manage to trace McCall back to his home, having discerned his residence. As the criminals surreptitiously infiltrate his premises, McCall is busy boiling honey to tend to a gunshot wound. When the criminals invade his apartment, they find themselves under the surveillance of hidden cameras, with McCall observing from another room. Despite seeing evidence in his apartment that McCall is planning to leave town, Teddy remains skeptical, suspecting McCall is keeping tabs on him. McCall does leave town, but his destination is to meet Brian and Susan Plummer, 
two old colleagues with whom he previously served in an intelligence agency. McCall seeks Susan's insights about Teddy and his associates. Brian and McCall revisit a conversation about McCall's car bomb incident, which led everyone, including Brian and Susan, to presume Robert was deceased. However, Susan had an intuition that Robert was still alive. Upon her return, she discloses to McCall that the men he eliminated belonged to the Russian mafia, led by Vladimir Pushkin. Teddy, also known as Nikolai, is Pushkin's goad man for critical operations. Raymar and Peterson, who were on Pushkin's payroll, were found dead with their testicles brutally mutilated. Susan warns McCall that these men will relentlessly pursue him until he and everyone he cares for are dead. After receiving Susan's green light, Robert leaves the next morning to finish what he started. McCall captures Frank Masters in his car after rigging it with a hose from the exhaust. He threatens Frank with a slow, lethal suffocation in the car unless he shares valuable information about Pushkin's operations. Eventually, Frank caves and takes McCall to the Russians' cash counting and storage warehouse, which houses colossal stacks of money totaling millions. McCall persuades the henchmen to surrender their weapons and locks them in a room filled with the cash, intending for the police to discover them. He subsequently liberates all the employees and presents them with a parting bonus from Pushkin's funds. Frank is restrained with handcuffs, and McCall urges him to inform the authorities about the situation. McCall then encourages Frank to make one final righteous choice by sharing information he suspects Frank has kept as leverage against Pushkin. When the police arrive, they find the criminals, the cash, and apprehend Frank. From Frank's safety deposit box, McCall retrieves a USB drive containing additional information about Pushkin's operations and a list of individuals on Pushkin's payroll, which includes law enforcement officers, sheriffs, politicians, and so forth, along with cash, passports, and various other items. McCall anonymously hands over the information to the investigator leading the warehouse raid. He also locates one of Pushkin's oil tankers and decimates it using explosives. Teddy seeks the help of a band of Russian assassins in his quest to find and eliminate McCall. The teen leader excuses himself to use the restroom during their communal dinner. Not long after, McCall seats himself across Teddy, presenting him with the teen leader's blood-stained sunglasses and informing him of his permanent departure. Robert verifies his identity to Teddy and offers him an opportunity to cease all activities before he concludes his mission and annihilates the entire syndicate. Teddy dismisses Robert's relevance to him and politely declines the offer. Robert indicates his willingness to persist before getting up and leaving the table. Ralphie, Jenny, and other Homar employees are kidnapped by two of Teddy's men and threatened with death unless Frank meets Teddy at the site of the oil tanker explosion. The villains track his phone and await his arrival. As McCall fails to arrive at the designated meeting spot near the obliterated oil terminal, the henchman in Homart prepared to execute one of his colleagues. Suddenly, music blares over the intercom. A thug takes Ralphie away, but is shot by McCall while investigating the music source. McCall lures the other captor away from the hostages before terminating him as well. Teddy, along with his additional hired hands, arrive at Homart. As McCall silently navigates through the warehouse's darkness, setting traps using nearby tools, they commence their search for him, falling victim one after another. He pierces one in the throat and strangles another using barbed wire. He confronts and eventually kills the biggest adversary, enduring injuries in the process. When Ralphie returns to assist McCall, he gets shot in the leg. The last villain is lured to the break room by McCall. The break room is annihilated when propane gas canisters in a microwave explode, upon Ralphie restoring the electricity as instructed. As the propane blast triggers the sprinklers, Teddy remains the last one seeking McCall. Teddy finds Ralphie and is about to fire at him, when McCall surfaces from his hideout with a stud gun, firing multiple times at Teddy, before advancing to shoot him in the throat, thereby killing him. Three days later, McCall materializes in the bathroom of Pushkin's Moscow home as he showers. McCall incessantly toggles the light switch and fills the sink with water. After a brief exchange with Pushkin, McCall departs. 
Pushkin heads to the sink to retrieve his firearm, but suddenly grasps that McCall had cut the electrical cords and left them exposed on the floor, prompting him to call for his guards. Upon contact with the water, the live wire electrocutes Pushkin, who is standing in the water. As McCall exits Pushkin's estate, it is evident from the numerous corpses that he has eliminated everyone within the mansion. As soon as everything is finished, McCall goes back to Boston to continue his peaceful life. Alina, who is getting better from her wounds, approaches him as he brings groceries home. She updates him on her new employment status and her reading habits. With his newfound purpose in mind, McCall returns to his quiet life. People who feel trapped with all the odds against them and no way out have inspired him to produce an advertisement. He gets a note at the diner asking for assistance one night. He simply responds, yes. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.